Good evening and thank you for spending your Monday evening <laughs> at the National Literature Museum. Uh, I'm Andre Kovod and I'm the, the Deputy Director of the Austrian Cultural Forum. And I really have the great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Markus Köhler, uh, who, is a, <laughs> who is a very esteemed uh, slam poet, like, but not only slam poet, actually. And uh, we wanted to have um, um, more, I would say, unconventional discussion and uh, for that, I really wanted to uh, push together Mr. Kölle with Mr. Leslan Zupa and thank you so much for uh, accepting this, this invitation and um, to talk about poetry and to talk about how we do a good slam sometimes uh, or not. <laughs> thank you so much uh, again and the floor is yours. Thank you, Andre. I'm so happy that uh, I can be with Marcus for this talk because for a long time I wanted to have a talk about the way that uh, spoken word changes the, uh, the themes with poetry in Europe mm -hmm. because usually when we are speaking about uh, spoken word we are thinking about uh, American or British uh, performers but then there are many things that are happening in, uh, in Italy, in, especially in Germany and in Austria, uh, in France also, with spoken word that are very specific, and uh, they have a special um, accent that uh, they put in the contemporary poetry in Europe, and maybe we will talk about this, but then, uh, Let's begin with the conclusions, <laughs> because this is the last meeting you're having with the uh, Romanian audience mm -hmm. uh, in this tour you've had, uh, that uh, uh, you've started in uh, Timisoara, yes. uh, and uh, you have here guests that are uh, uh, were in Timisoara also in the first uh, editions of uh, Strada for a Lume, the project they have with spoken word there. Caterina uh, Matei, Mina Decu, and Silvia Gredinaru. Silvia was in the third or fourth year uh, of the project. They all filmed in Kinshara as you did in your uh, first uh, days in Romania. Yes, which was quite a surprise uh, in public. Uh, I expected a, a dark, uh, cold room. Uh, because it was a beautiful day and then I was happy uh, to be outside, get filmed near the, in the fabric uh, quarter, which, um, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. And we had a, yeah, it was, it was fun and it was with an e-harp and an e-bass player. And well, uh, I haven't seen it yet. Nobody uh, saw the whole thing because the instruments directly went into the computers. So it was a bit strange for all of us. But at the end, we will see the, the result later. You the post-production. You haven't worked before with them, with the musicians. No. When I arrived the same day, uh, we oh, met. Okay. Uh, you just filmed it. The, well, uh, they, they got um, the translated poem. Uh, uh, I asked if I can change the poem. The poem. Uh, we didn't, because they prepared uh, some sort of uh, Twin Peaks, stylish, uh, atmospheric uh, thing, and then um, it was it was very quiet. And um, yeah. I, I cannot say more because you I can. just hear I just hear the e-harp in the left ear and the bass behind me, and uh, the rest will do the book. Well, the, the Twin Peaks is a good description because yeah. you I don't know if you realized, but when they were posted online. Uh -huh. Pictures from the uh, uh, filming you've had there. Yeah. There was someone commenting, That is my house in front of my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's a power station, or some sort of power station. Uh, I, I, I think they make warm water there because it was a, a strange uh, corner on the other hand. Um, this old church, will, which will become a, a cultural center in the future, is a synagogue, I guess. 
And on the other side is fabric style. And, uh, yeah. From your point of view, what were the differences that you had with these uh, meetings in uh, Timisoara, Cluj, uh, and in Yash? It was uh, different every time because uh, the first uh, day after the recording, um, there was a so-called uh, encounter with students, and um, I expected a workshop. A uh, workshop uh, for me means um, the students have to write, and, I, I, uh, and the students arrived, and um, to, I don't know his name, uh, some sort of teacher um, told me, uh, they don't know what's happening, but they, uh, they just one thing they don't want to do is writing. <laughs> so that was a good start. <laughs> uh, but at the end they wrote and they had two uh, small pieces of poetry afterwards, um, different languages, and we had good time and fun. Um, but, and perhaps they expected the reading, because, but um, when somebody books me for a workshop, <laughs> I try to teach writing, so uh, this, uh, in, in Cluj it was uh, different. There was uh, at the morning, in the morning there was the, the writer workshop, with, which was excellent. Uh, the students are, are shy and don't ask a lot, but they write good. And uh, they wrote in German, which uh, is hard for everybody, writing in a foreign language. And in Timisoara they mixed all the languages, from Hungarian to Romanian, English, and uh, I liked it. And in Cluj, afterwards, uh, in the evening, um, because I, I stayed in Cluj 19 years ago, and I just remembered one place, and it was this Insomnia uh, bar. And it's still uh, there, and we had our show there, and afterwards I read in the program in Yashi, uh, there's one poet, uh, Lena Chiari, uh, organizing spoken word events in exactly this place. So I had a good opportunity to contact her and we had a talk. I bought a book of her, I can't read anything in it, but I enjoyed her reading. But after five minutes, to be honest, I, I got it because I speak Italian and <laughs> know certain things and in the discussion especially, I came into it somehow and um, I did it like in former times when I listened to pop songs. I made my own lyrics, <laughs> so I had, I had big fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought the poems were excellent. <laughs> and in Yash also you had a meeting with the students and uh, the night of poetry at Philip. I, was bit, I had a, bit, a little bit of fear uh, of this uh, poetry night because I saw the program from 22 until 4 in the morning. And uh, my name starts with a K, which is more in the middle. And I hoped they have other systems to organize it. Uh, mm -hmm. I hoped that Austria would <laughs> 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 put me ahead, which uh, in fact happened. And so I was the second. And uh, the event started, and it was over for me already. And then I uh, had several hours to get in contact with other poets. And uh, I really enjoyed that because uh, well, it, it's huge, the whole festival is huge, and everybody has its own rhythms, and uh, you can't bother people at breakfast uh, uh, or later, but if you go for a drink during the long night of poetry, you uh, already have something in common, because you wait for a drink <laughs> to start, and uh, that's how I, I got in contact with several poets, and I really loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, we are in this moment of uh, making uh, comparisons, you're, uh, you're also organizing, you've organized lots of workshops in different places of the world, in different countries. I just did them. Organizing is uh, <laughs> not the others. Uh, I, um, I had the opportunity to give workshops in other countries. Yes. I see, you are giving them the organizing. Yeah, I know how to organize. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very important yeah. distinction. Uh, but I wanted to, to know uh, how do you see the differences in the approach you have in different countries with different traditions and a different perspective on spoken poetry? Um, 
to start a spoken word poetry. Uh, and uh, I have to mention that I noticed uh, that a lot of poets who started with slam poetry and now um, have stepped forward to the real literature, let's say, and they, avi uh, they, they avoid to mention that they had their roots in slam poetry. And um, they call it spoken word now. And um, since I'm, um, I started uh, slam poetry for more than 20 years in, in Austria, um, and I've had to fight a lot for, uh, yeah, not only for, for places uh, and, and, and for, for respect, uh, I still uh, try to mention that uh, it started as a spoken word poetry is, is one I ideal type of, uh, of uh, expression at a poetry slam. Uh, but the good thing is uh, at poetry slam events everything is possible. And, uh, and that's very important because uh, I, for myself, I, I had the impression when I started writing that the literature market or, or, uh, is, is very uh, closed. And uh, the most important thing for me is to make stages for everybody. And uh, so everybody is welcome and uh, that's still the thing I fight for. Uh, low level entrance, uh, everybody can uh, join, everybody uh, can do his own thing and uh, a spoken word has a certain, uh, a certain sound, a certain rhythm, uh, but slam poetry is more. I, um, I lost perhaps your question. Uh, it was the differences you yeah. saw I, in different countries. Okay, different countries. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, where there is an oral, oral tradition of literature, they, they love it because they are used to, um, yeah, to, to the oral part anyway. Um, and uh, from country to country, it, it depends how um, the scene developed, how the MCs behind it, uh, which, which sort of uh, poetry they um, preferred. Because uh, in Germany, we have a lot of uh, comedy as well. I, I was looking that you've had like uh, workshops in uh, Ljubljana, which yes. is not so far from Germany, but also in Zakynthos. Ah, yeah, but that's a, a special thing in Greece. That's a, it's more or less a, a, an Austrian camp on this island. Uh, so the, the people there, uh, it's a it's a summer academy organized by Austrians. On a, on a Greek island. <laughs> so, uh, there are just some uh, Greek people there, but most of them are German speaking. So, so it was also German speaking, but also you've had uh, workshops in Erevan. Yes. Like yeah, that's, that was excellent uh, a long time ago. But I, I always do it in German, uh, even if the if students, um, I, I explain the things in English. Uh, but uh, even if they are low level or uh, beginners, I do the poems in, in my language because uh, I just want to give them, yeah, they should, they should feel it. So it's this famous saying, uh, if you don't understand the poem, feel it. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't want to uh, make them a force, a force um, feelings when I do the poems in English because uh, mm -hmm. it's about the sound and mm -hmm. uh, the rhythm and uh, origins in the language I wrote uh, Because I was speaking about this uh, in the beginning, uh, the fact that we think mainly of uh, Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. uh, references when uh, we speak about uh, spoken word poetry or slam, because slam is uh, a tradition uh, from Chicago and all that. Uh, how did you deal with this fact? Because uh, now the German scene is very much developed and completely different. The spoken word is just uh, it's just the English word. Uh, we had spoken word poetry all over the world, especially in Central East Asia, uh, and it's the origins of uh, poetry are uh, oral. And uh, okay, now we have this spoken word as a term, uh, and. The slam scene started in America, yes, uh, but uh, in the meantime, 
every country develops different styles and uh, it, it's, it starts with, in French, you just have three minutes, for example, which uh, means that there's more poetry uh, or shorter poetry uh, texts and uh, in Germany now you have up to seven minutes that changes completely the, the whole thing. Um, and in the last 20 years there were all, uh, I, I say, it comes in waves. It starts uh, with rebellic and political uh, things, then uh, some, sometimes with experiments. Experiments are over now, uh, especially since everybody uh, watches YouTube clips about poetry. And if you start with one and you're used to uh, this type, you get just this type. And when I stand in front of a class uh, uh, and do different styles, and then they say, ah, that that is allowed as well, because we just uh, had these poems and, uh, and they tried to imitate this typical rhythm. Um, and imitating is always the wrong way to get, um, yeah, to, to come through. <laughs> because you have to find your, your own voice and style and um, that's happening, still happening. And that's a good thing because um, the scene in Austria is uh, always renewing itself, but it's um, it's just it's not just young people and uh, in the audience and on stage as well. So uh, that's the good thing from 15 up to 85 on stage and in the audience, and I like that. Because we began uh, uh, being interested in into poetry about the same time mm -hmm. in the two, uh, early 2000. I was very curious what helped you in your uh, approach to spoken word poetry. Uh, well, uh, I studied German and uh, Italian, and during my studies, I uh, I was afraid to write, although I liked writing, and there was no place uh, to go reading poems or stuff, and uh, I. I had respect or even fear to write poetry, I began with stories. And my first poem was a poem uh, Why I Don't Write Poems. <laughs> because I had too much fear and all that. Uh, for that. And, um, and I, 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 we organized uh, readings, uh, we were a little group of um, former students. We published them in our own magazine, we made our own magazine. And um, that was some sort of yeah, circle and, and movement, and suddenly this World Poetry Slam was, um, was here. And, and uh, in the 90s in Austria, it was an open stage. Uh, everybody could, uh, it was not just poetry, it was also um, clownery, uh, uh, juggling. And, and, uh, so it was open mic evening. Yeah, I don't, yeah, no, they say, they say open mic stage and everything could happen there and because everything could happen after one year it was over because it was too much. <laughs> it was too much. And um, then in 2000, 2001 I was in uh, Hamburg, Hamburg uh, and saw a poetry slam in, in the style and with the rules um, everybody uses nowadays and then um, I took this event with me to Australia and started in a little place, um, yeah, very small, uh, and 50 people inside, 70 of them were smoking, <laughs> mic and uh, just, yeah, that was fun, that was good, and, and those, those were the beginnings. Um, long time ago, we had always had an uh, audience uh, and. Um, we found poets, uh, it, it took some time, but uh, it was a mover, movement, we, we call it slamily. Um, so um, I have a fixed day since uh, 2001, always the last Friday in the month, um, is this event in Innsbruck, which, which I still organize. Um, and yeah, people came and they get more, and, um, and uh, some of them uh, make comedy now, some of them make music now, some of them still make uh, poetry in different styles and 
Well, my first book was, was stories. Um, prose. Prose, yes. But this, uh, you were already involved in the university with the teaching at that point, or you were just a student? Uh, I, I finished the studies and then I started. So you were, uh, because I know that uh, you also teach and um, work with university. After university, I, um, I teach for two months, I think. <laughs> uh, until nobody, uh, no, no students were in the room anymore. <laughs> and uh, that was an important decision for me because afterwards I uh, started writing for real because I wanted to teach for real. Uh, it was in Tunisia at the university and uh, after the second lesson uh, a student came to me and told me, you have to tell us what we have to learn. <laughs> And uh, I was full of ideas and uh, didactic, uh, didactic stuff. And I said, yeah, no. yeah. And uh, I, I decided to not uh, let me break after two <laughs> lessons and uh, decided to not become a teacher. But all right. <laughs> good friend. But this is, uh, I mean, uh, this ability of uh, being able not to tell people what to learn is uh, something that uh, is connected to the spoken word uh, evolution. Yes. For you, I but, see. But to, to, um, to prepare the space for everything mm -hmm. happening, yeah. So that, well, uh, yeah, yeah, at some point. <laughs> and I, I wanted to, to, uh, this for the students as well, but yeah, we didn't connect. <laughs> Connection is important. I saw in uh, yes. some uh, interview, in, in, in an interview with you, uh, for you, and I wanted to see how this connection works for you. But then also the relationship you have with this connection you you have with the audience, and the fact that you have completely two kinds of written text, some to be read aloud be performed and some, some just to be read. Of course. How do you? Uh, but the, I'm, I'm fighting for the, the thing that uh, spoken word poetry and poetry, you name it, uh, is, a, is a, a new and a special genre. Uh, and um, of course, writing for a book is different. Uh, and, um, but uh, you can do, uh, in the book, you can do a lot which. Uh, with um, how you put it on the, on the page, yeah, that's more or less the um, uh, yeah, the, 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 the direct <laughs> how, how to put it. Mm. What I do on stage when I perform a, a poem uh, for performing, uh, you have ways to put it on a page, but it's not the same. Uh, and we we made um, slam poetry books as well. Uh, you need. Uh, explanations uh, for, for but, it in but the, in sometimes the you feel the need to use the poems that are uh, written just to be read instead of the ones that are written to be performed because you've told me about uh, what happened at Inyash yeah. where, where you preferred to use the poems you had in the book as a book. Yeah, in Yash, uh, uh, the, the tent was crowded and uh, it was loud and it was fun and it started and it started um, with microphone problems and uh, and I had to enter the stage and I, I decided immediately I cannot do a, a poem written on a page now, uh, I have to do something lively. And I did that. And the funny thing was, uh, I did my poem, and afterwards the, the MC came and uh, wrote the end of the translation of another poem. Yeah. Queuing, queuing for a drink, uh, I got um, compliments for both parts. <laughs> one liked the written thing, one didn't like so, uh, do you think we can, uh, uh, you can show us something of your poetry and then we continue talking and then again we have a moment of... Yeah? Okay, yeah. So, um, I just, yeah, I, I will, will ask the audience. Uh,
Right. People, what do you want? You will hear a German or Austrian uh, poem, a uh, spoken word poem now. Um, what should it be? Should it be something uh, in the style of um, something culinaric with um, subtext uh, Austrian, uh, Austrian politics? Should it be uh, something about uh, life itself? Uh, or should it be something about love itself? Because uh, when I have to explain uh, slam poetry, I often say it's a moderner Minnesang. Minnesang, uh, Medieval Times. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so, what should it be? You decide. One All of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, then. Uh, you can vote. Raise hands. Yes. <laughs> ah. The first option. Raise I need you any, anyway. So uh, I start. Oh. I, everybody. I need everybody. I start with the with the love poem. Um, and to get in the mood, I need you to say "ah" oh, for me. Oh. Yeah, I feel it. It's become <laughs> water. Yeah, do it. And um, by the way, um, I will do this poem now. Uh, and if you feel like doing "ah," oh, do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't bother me. Uh, it's it's important for for the whole thing. Um, I wrote it because of. Um, I, I used this explanation with the Minnesang and then uh, some, uh, on a certain point I got invited to an event which was called Der Hohen Minne Tiefer Fall, uh, which will, uh, how to put it, yeah, uh, they said the Minnesang has fallen uh, mm -hmm. because of slam and then uh, mm -hmm. I wrote this uh, poem and um, it's Moderna Minnesang and for challenging me I put in a lot of uh, words about football and grammar. Mm -hmm. Grammar, football, love should fit <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so, and please give me the sound when I need it. Der hohen Minne tiefer Fall. Du machst mir Beine. Ich mach dir Gänsefüßchen. Du machst was du willst, ich will dich. Du willst überlegen, bist du überlegen, ich leg mich gern zu dir. Du, oh. du hängst gern mit mir ab und lässt es sogar zu, mein Ego höher an dir aufzuhängen. Ich häng an dir, ich steh auf dich. Du stehst auf, wenn dir was nicht passt. Ich pass zu dir, du triffst mich voll. Ich bin dein Tor, du mein Gewinn. Ich bin dein Spielball, aber nicht dein Vollpfosten. Du bist mein Netz, ich nicht nur nett. Du bist mehr Kreuz, Eck, Treffer, Freude als Kreuzschmerz, Frust. Du bist kein Fußballfan, darin sind wir vollends eins. Eins zu null, immer für dich. Oh. Du meine Eins und ich null Plan. Oh. Null Plan, ob du überhaupt mit mir spielen willst oder nur mit mir spielen willst. Ja. Willst du mich austrippeln und abschießen oder mich einnetzen? Willst du mich ins Abseits stellen oder meine steile Tricksvorlage sein? Willst du haken und dich in die Flucht schlagen, wenn ich jetzt noch mehr Fußballmetaphern auspacke? Oh. Oh. <lacht> willst du vielleicht mich auspacken? Oh. <lacht> Willst du mir zumindest eine Chance oder eine Wartenummer geben? Ich will keine schnelle Nummer sein. Ich hab Zeit. Ich hab Zeit. Ich hab Zeit. Ich hab Zeit für dich, du musst dir mich nur nehmen. Du, dir, mich, ich, mir, dich, das nenne ich Verdichtung. Lass mich dein Dichter sein, dein Hirnmasseur und Pfropfgut, dein Lachmuskeltrainer und dein Gelassenheitsjogi, dein Intellektkonfekt und deine Haushaltsschnitte, dein Gesprächsmotor und deine Assoziationskettensäge, dein Dialoger, Rhythmus und deine Quadrataktivitätswurzel, deine Zungenentzündung und deine Blasenkatharsis. Ich streiche, du, Kitzler, ich Po, du und und ja, auf Italienisch, also E und Sie, wir, also Po, E, Sie. Hm. Wir der hohen Minne, idealer Fall, du mein erster Fall, wir ein Fall für zwei. Wir Grammatiken gleich. Andere mögen lecken, wir flektieren. Andere mögen kopulieren, wir konjugieren, wir extemporieren, wir verlängern den Gliedsatz. 
Andere mögen es banal, wir mögen es konsekutiv kausal. Was heißt hier Genitiv? Wir versinken <lacht> miteinander, immer und immer wieder, Wiederholung vertieft, Genitiv verschwindet nicht. Wir sind der hohen Minne Fallschirm. Wir hauen uns in die Tiefe, für euch, für uns, für der Minne Dichtung Tiefenstruktur. Genitiv ist ein negativer, appellativer Imperativ, der uns nicht aufhalten kann. Wir halten uns, wir halten einander. Zusammen halten wir einander hoch. Oh. Hochzeit. Jawohl, höchste Zeit für einen Temposwechsel. Andere Wechsel mögen später kommen. Jetzt kommt es uns im Futur. Wir werden kommen. Im Futur 2. Wir werden gekommen sein. Im Futur 3. Wir werden gekommen, gekommen, gekommen sein. Im Futur 4. Wir werden gekommen, 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 gekommen sein. Im Futur Infinito. Wir werden immer gekommen sein. Wir Futur Infinito. Wir Gegenwart. Wir Perfekt. Du und dein Ex Imperfekt. Ja. Jetzt kommt mein Lieblingssatz. Wir grammatikalen nach Zahlen und sind mehr als die Summe unserer Geschlechtsteile. Wir teilen uns und werden mehr. Wir sind nicht mehr Single, wir sind die Mehrzahl. Und du, mein Ein- und Plurales. Bis dann auf einmal nicht mehr alles rund läuft und wir da hohen Minne Schieferfall sind. Sag nicht, meine Gesichtszüge entgleisen. Sag nicht, meine Nase wäre ein Schieferstollen. Sag nicht, der 17 Grad links dran meines Penises kratzte dich unangenehm an der Scheidenwand. Sag nicht, ich soll Penis nicht flektieren. Sag nicht, ich syntaxte und syntakelte dir nur hinterher. Sag nicht, ich wiederholte flektierische Vergleiche. Sag nicht, ich werde weder Zeit Wort noch Zeit wert. Sag nicht, ich werde bloß Beiwort, aber an sich nicht dein Fall. Sonst wird das der Hopfen, Minne, klarer Fall. Dann fälle ich mich, hack ich mich um, hack, verschnetzel mich im Bier, dann schäume ich für Bier, schäume wegen deiner, dann schäume ich für dich und schäme ich mich nicht, dann falle ich und löse ich mich auf, dann falle ich und löse ich mich in Kummerschaum auf, denn du bist für mich der Minne bester Fall, ich für dich der Minne einzige Falternative. Oh. Du bist mein Minnefalter, ich dein Schmetterling im Bauch, bin ich der hohen Minne tiefer Fall? Fällst du auch? Oh. Now is uh, the first moment uh, when if you have questions, please. What is the part of improvising actually uh, when slamming this? Hmm? Uh, always when I, uh, I don't <coughs> remember the lines, I have to improvise. <laughs> <laughs> so you improvise words? I improvise... In the uh, No, um, but it's, it's written. And it's, um, it's the first version, the written version, <laughs> uh, changes uh, until I have uh, know it by half. And it's changed completely, so I have to rewrite it afterwards. And then I have the structure, and then, um, of course, uh, from time to time I forget lines, and then I put something in. Uh, and I have poems where I can put um, um, actual uh, things in, so that they have the structure, and in the middle there can be some sort of, yeah, newest political movements uh, or stuff. So the performance is a part of the writing process <coughs> for some of your poems. Yes, if you say writing pro process, yeah, the poem is, uh, is um, ready uh, uh, after uh, having tested it on stage. And do you have an example how much the poem has changed? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Hmm. It's for the editors. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I can't show you, but I can show you, uh, uh, yeah, no, that's, yeah, of course you know that. Uh, so this is, you are still working? Yes, uh, I haven't, um, I will, I, yeah, I can do this example, because um, that's a work in progress. Uh, I can, I could read it just like it is and say that's, uh, it's finished now, but I, I, I want to, I want to have it uh, in my mind because 
Um, I like to have it, the, the text in my mind because I don't see very good. Uh, a lot of stages don't have good light. <laughs> and, um, and of course, to get in contact with the people because uh, not every poem um, has to be. Um, so the process of working with the poem, with your poem, including the performance, is also uh, something a, a way of supporting memorizing the poem for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, it gives me space. <laughs> I can get in contact with people uh, mm -hmm. and, and search the lines again. But um, I need the audience to, to write it, uh, to complete it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a, a spoken word po poem is uh, finished when it's for the audience and for myself. Um, and that's the difference. To, yeah, I was thinking it. about the, the, the role memory mm -hmm. plays for you, because I know people that find it very easy to say by heart the uh, poems, mm -hmm. and people that find it very hard for them to uh, keep in mind the words and... Yeah, it's harder to, to test it uh, in front of my uh, wife uh, okay. in the kitchen <laughs> than in front of our audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your, your work starts at home? In the kitchen. Mm -hmm. In the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if I don't know the poem by heart, I have to clean the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I have to do anyways. <laughs> Because when I have it in the pocket, uh, I don't concentrate uh, enough, <laughs> and then uh, I, 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 yeah, I can always put it out. Uh, but mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, actually, since you you just said that you are improvising and changing mm -hmm. things until the work is finished as you like it, uh, in coordination with the, with the audience, how actually? Uh, do you remember afterwards the final as being mm -hmm. the perfect, for you, of course, uh, version of the poem? Yeah, that's an interesting question because um, when you don't know uh, a part by heart, it has reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it is, yeah, it, or the rhythm, or uh, mm -hmm. it's not finished. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing um, I say on the stage automatically is better. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what you have to remember. How do you remember it afterwards? That, that was the question. So you have the oh, yeah. performance is finished, and then you go home, and then you... Yeah, you, I know, I know where I had... How do you remember what, what, I, know, I know where I, I had problems, or I had a mistake, or whatever, yeah. Yeah. and then I have to... Yeah, And you remember it, it uh, precisely the, the same way it was on mm. the stage? The Nobody else can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to I have to find it, uh, but um, you can ask someone to film you, mm -hmm. and you just. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't like I don't like filming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we didn't know that part. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I know the part where there were problems, and I have to make it better. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the point. And um, so you have for yourself a review of your performance afterwards. Of course, in the kitchen again. <laughs> <laughs> She's a poet as well. So we, we talk a lot about the things. So what was the, the best and what was the worst performance you've had? Ah, the best. Um, <laughs> that, that's the, the thing that you always remember the worst <laughs> and remember the good ones. Um, uh, I completely fail. Uh, I had blackouts, of course, on quick stages in the middle of a poem. Mm -hmm. Complete blackout and no <laughs> paper in the pocket. Uh, so I started another one. Uh, it, was, it was obvious that I failed, but. Uh, but it's an advantage that nobody actually knows what you're yes. planning to say. So. That's it. The, but it was a completely different. Uh, it's it's still. It wasn't embarrassing at all. Uh, 
But uh, at the beginning, I was shy to to to, um, to do the things we do now when we have to talk in English and, and perform in, in in German, and uh, sometimes I just yeah. I didn't have words at all, and that was a bit. So this happened in uh, Austria, maybe. Uh, or international events. Even uh, for the international events, mm -hmm. things happened like mm -hmm. black house and. Yes, it happens. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but people are not speaking about that usually. That's why I am asking. Yeah, no, it, it has. It's part of the thing. Um, I know. I, I'm no robot or machine, and. You have good days, you have bad days, mm -hmm. and and now I know how to handle it, and um, and that's um, of course I, I'd like to deliver, but uh, if if I make mistakes, I make mistakes, and mistakes on stage in front of our audience, um, if you if you if you don't lose it yourself, it's mm -hmm. no problem. So it's part of the show. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. you can be part of the show. Yeah, if you're professional enough and say, oh. I forgot it, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. forgot the line. And um, people most of them like it, love it. Yeah. Uh, we have a, we have a um, in Austria and in Germany a long time ago, um, it started, I don't know how it started, but uh, when obviously a poet forgot his lines, uh, everybody was saying, heavy metal! And then, then you continue, and uh, nowadays it's more like uh, mm -hmm. so, so you get some su support, mm -hmm. and yeah, you will find a way out. This, this is different because I, uh, I went in 2000s in Romania at some uh, contests of hip, hip hop, mm -hmm. and the cheer when someone uh, would mess up or would forget their lines mm -hmm. was go to the library. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> uh, I want uh, to know if uh, uh, if this is uh, the worst thing that happened. Uh, you've said that you were very shy, and no, I, know, I was. Shy. I know that. Yeah. I know that uh, many people in performance poetry in uh, spoken word have their beginning as a shy performer. So how did, did, did this change for you? When did it change? Um, it changed by yeah, being comfortable on stage um, and knowing what to say as well, because at the beginning I, I just uh, wrote experimental things and I hide it behind the language. Mm -hmm. uh, I, had, I had a lot of um, formalistic poems. Um, for example, uh, I wrote a book with, uh, from A to Z with every letter um, uh, alliteration stuff, oh. uh, which is excellent on one hand, but it's, uh, yeah, it's just um, hiding behind uh, the language. And it's, it was good for, for skills and stuff, but it, that was my start. And, um, as I already mentioned, um, I had respect and, and even fear of poetry uh, for a long time. And it took me some time, and after a certain time, I had the techniques and uh, self-confidence and uh, also the, yeah, the, the, the will uh, to, to perform. Was it only the experience that you've had? Because you were reading the formalist poems for a long time and then uh, you were uh, relaxed in front of the audience, or were there some events that events had? But it's more uh, about um, myself. Um, I'm, my origins are. Uh, um, we didn't have books at home, so I'm uh, out of a working family, and um, because of. Um, the political situation in Austria in the 80s and 90s. Uh, we had a good um, education system, and it was possi possible for me to, ma to make university, which nobody in my um, nobody in our family had before. Um, and um, so it took me a long time to to to.
to find my place and um, to also write about the topics I, I know uh, very good. So uh, that was the most uh, difficult part, I guess. Uh, is it different when you work with uh, students from university because the things politically changed everywhere? Mm -hmm. Now you don't have s uh, so many people coming from uh, outside uh, the families that were already in university. Mm -hmm. You still have it, but it's are exceptions now. So you, when you are making, you are you are giving the workshops. You still have an opportunity to meet people that are not in the US. Yes, I do a lot of workshops with, with uh, children as well. <laughs> so if, uh, you do workshops with 10 and up to 13 years old, you have them all. Because later in the, um, yeah, in high school or uh, university, it's just stu students again. But uh, before, you, you have them all, and that's uh, uh, that's. Interesting, of course, uh, working with children is always uh, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I, uh, yeah. But in what way is it different for you working with people that are for, from the university in workshops uh -huh. than working with people that uh, are not from our university background? Uh, I didn't say it's easier, it's uh, another thing, and I like both. Mm -hmm. because in what way? Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, I, well, I studied and I like the academic discourse as well, and uh, I like to have sometimes a group which is, um, yeah, more academic. But I, I'm still at the grassroots and, and um, um, underground um, and, and working class poet uh, as well. And, um, and by the way, those those workshops um, are, are in Sachintos. <laughs> Uh, I would wait uh, because the, there you have an, a, a different clientele again. So it's it's it's, it's different. Uh, I like to to switch uh, when I see the people. When uh, uh, yeah, and I try, I always try to find to get in contact. That's what I've said now. Uh, do you still give, uh, have poems that you are reading? Like uh, as opposed to performing, mm -hmm. you want us to read something? Uh, yes, for example, I, I wrote a book, uh, Poems for the Whole Family. <laughs> That's uh, one of these education uh, styles thing because, well, um, I would have loved uh, when my mm -hmm. mother or father uh, would have um, read poems with me together. And so those these poems are for children, but not only for children. I always hide it something for the adults because um, they have to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to uh, be uh, yeah, entertained as well. So, um, yes, this one is a... Uh, I have a translation in English, but I think it's not useful. It's about uh, aunts and uncles. And uh, I sit now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. When I read it from page, I sit. As you say. And I drink. Uh, As you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Meine Onkel Tanten. Meine Tanten kannten immer alle. Meine Onkels hatten immer zu erzählen. Meine Onkel Tanten fanden Tratschen schön. Meine Tanten Dram Damen liebten Beziehungsdramen. Meine Onkel Herren liebten es, sich zu beschweren. Bla bla, tritt stratsch, so so, la la, na das schon her, oh je, aha, habt ihr gehört und wisst ihr schon, na so etwas, das ist ein Hund. Oh nein, oh ja, oh doch, so so, also, was noch? Die mit dem und der mit der, kennt ihr die und wisst die wer? Die kriegt jetzt von dem ein Kind, die und der, wer sind die geschwind? Die hat gesagt und der hat gemeint, die und die wer jetzt vereint. Der und der baut sich ein Haus mit dem und der ist leider aus. Und nein, oh ja, oh doch, so, so, also was noch? Die von dem, der mit der einen, die hat Pech, es ist zum Weinen. Der, den man vom Fernsehen kennt, der lebt jetzt doch echt getrennt. Das ist doch wirklich.
Fläche. Eine Fläche, der ist doch nicht mal halb so scheit. Die können da doch nicht schon wieder. Nein, ich bin nicht böse, ich bin nur Zwieder. Oh nein, oh ja, oh doch. So, so, also was noch. Das und das und das läuft schief, dort und dort und dort herrscht Knief. Mir geht's gut, ich kann nicht klagen, ja, auch das muss man mal sagen. Das ist doch bitte wirklich ein Skandal. Na bitte sehr, jetzt schaut doch mal, jetzt kostet das Bier schon wieder mehr. Geht das so weiter, ich trink nichts mehr. Oh nein, oh ja, oh doch, so, so, also, was noch? Bla, bla, tritt, stratsch, so, so, oh je, ihr müsst schon gehen, ist nicht okay. Na, wenn ich's euch doch sage, viel zu kurz. Die Sonntagnachmittage. Meine Onkel Tanten haben immer recht. Meine Onkel Tanten haben immer was zu lachen. Meine Onkel Tanten sind spaßige Verwandte. <lacht> But it's, uh, yeah. it's not the one you asked for, I think, because you wanted. No, it's fine because I, uh, I, I could see how uh, uh, you make your show with the sound now. Yeah. Okay. Down. But I wanted to ask you about the, the way you work together with other people for mm -hmm. your books. Because uh, you have, we spoke about the fact that you have many titles mm -hmm. published, most of them working together with someone else. Mm -hmm. Here with the uh, uh, drawings. Yeah, illustrator. So. With illustrators, yeah. but also with other people that uh, are uh, writing, right? Yes. Um, a lot of the titles. Uh, Eight of them um, are a project uh, which was a poetic dialogue with a friend of mine and we started it um, and it took us uh, six years, the whole project, because every year we choose two months where one of us started every day writing a 12 line poem to the other one and the other has to respond the same day until uh, midnight with 12 lines again. So we had uh, for every a day a year and for every hour a day a line afterwards. And those are um, monthly books. So, so that's why I have such a long list. There <laughs> <laughs> is like 22 titles. Or yes, and eight of them are this, uh, this books and then the, the publishers uh, got bankrupt. <laughs> Just very small age. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can can you think of the differences you see in the spoken word or slam stage in different countries in Europe, like French? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as I already mentioned, in, in France, in France they have just three minutes, which is one is the rules, right? Yes. Is the rule, uh, but it's, um, this rule uh, about the time is uh, important because you can't uh, write stories anymore. Three minutes is, you can't develop storytelling. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more or less just poems there. Yeah. Um, uh, in Hungary, as you know as well, they are more uh, rebellious, still rebellious, I would say. Um, in Germany, it's more comedy. In Switzerland, it's. Nice. Just rich. <laughs> uh, it's different. How is rich? It's, yeah, it's really different. They have other topics to, to, to talk about. Uh, it's, it's sometimes strange for us. <laughs> Even for us. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's in Austria, it's different as well because um, if you have an MC um, which cultivates. Um, more the lyrical stuff, uh, yeah, the event is, um, yeah, you have, you, you, can, you can decide how it, in which direction it uh, moves, and um, what did I want to say? Uh, for example, um, we have a monthly uh, slam in Vienna, uh, where we have an extra point for multi, um, multilinguality, mm -hmm. uh, or if you, when you, can see that uh, the, po the po poet uh, doesn't have, uh, for example, German mother tongue and does mm -hmm. in German, or he switches languages. So we, we have to slam in the middle of um, um, a melting pot of, of nations. And uh, now, uh, 
yeah, it starts that they, they, they come and they use different languages and um, that works out. So um, you can't um, direct it uh, yourself. This, this because we now see the biggest scenes in Europe are in countries that uh, used to be empires and also always uh, open to this multitude of languages. Is it the way of the empire striking back? No. It's um, yeah, a good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. That's because now the influence is from the other yeah, um, side. Yeah. It's not uh, from uh, Austria to Hungary, it's from Hungary to Austria. Yeah, Austria. Vienna was always influenced by a lot of uh, languages and uh, ethnies and uh, well, it's, it's just the political system in the last years or the um, general tendency to uh, go. In, in what way are different uh, the poets that you've worked with in, um, in Erevan, for example, where the, where the tradition is with, with yeah. oral poetry rather than spoken word today? Well, uh, I really have to say uh, I have been one, once for one workshop so to make a general uh, statement. It's a bit, bit hard, but I uh, had the impression that they're used to uh, orality and uh, more than, um, for example, in Austria. But then again, it, it changed in the last times because uh, I think um, starting with the internet, uh, orality uh, got more important everywhere because of podcast boom, I don't know, in the last five years, for example, you know, ten years ago, nobody uh, podcast, no, the, the iPod, yeah, um, <laughs> but nobody uh, listened to uh, radio broadcasts for hours, yeah, uh, yeah you did it uh, 20 years ago uh, in small villages where you had no choice. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, and that's, uh, that's uh, the thing that changed, um, it's more about hearing and uh, orality and um, I'm not cultural pessimistic, I, I don't say that uh, people don't read uh, anymore because they read different stuff now and, and it changes and um, the good thing, uh, the slam poetry, spoken word poetry has survived already a lot of different movements because I started copying uh, flyers and making advertisement, then uh, there was Facebook, uh, Facebook is dead already, then uh, the other social platforms, uh, yeah, they will uh, go down and, and uh, then will still be here. <laughs> <laughs> question mark. Do you have any questions? So we have this umbrella of performance poetry and there's a lot of sub, sub genre. I mean, we have chess poetry, we have spoken word, we have slam. And the audience is a bit, I mean, they ask, they go to every genre and they ask different things from it. I mean, when we import this, we change it. I mean, spoken word, we are still reading, we say spoken word, but we do uh, multimodal poetry or the slam, we. Um, the aesthetical is important, and other social. I mean, it, people don't know exactly the difference between it, and you can ask from an apple to give you uh, cherries or beers. And I don't know, is this um, in Austria the public or even the poets know the differences, or it doesn't matter? I think it's uh, hopefully the minds of. Uh, most writers have changed uh, getting in contact with people and writing for people is not bad because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's always a writing for people, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you hide a tone and, and, and are uh, happy writing your books, somebody has to read it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and the rules, um, the poets uh, know, but um, in Austria, not a lot of. Uh, there is a, a big part of the scene that just do slam. Mm -hmm. um, we have 
chess uh, slams as well, but um, that's for the slam scene. And, and they won't call themselves uh, poets. They are poetry slammer. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's the other part. Um, I always tried to make bridges from the beginning on because I, lo I love all the literature, starting from the uh, sound poetry up to the playwrights. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's okay, you can choose um, if you just want to be a slime poet, if you just. Uh, nobody has to be a multifunctional uh, uh, performer. Any other questions? How, how do you deal actually with the, the music in your, in your poetry? I mean, um, judging, judging, actually taking as an example what you have already read, uh, which was uh, extremely interesting uh, for me and for someone understanding what you're saying, uh, because actually it's a matter of um, putting together small stereotypical um, phrases in a family and in uh, in a in a, fam in a in a family in an environment that is very domestic. Uh, but how do you choose? How do you wait, if you want, uh, your words and sounds in order to create a melody? Right. For example. Uh, uh, a typical, uh, typically for Austria is, uh, of course, the classical music, and um, then uh, especially the walls. Mm -hmm. And if you say uh, how, how to put the words, okay, uh, when, I, when I'm abroad, uh, I'd like to learn the audience the rhythm of the walls. And then, of course, I, I, I use certain words, because you can choose the words by its rhythm. And um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, um, it's the ABC Waltz, and um, you you started it. You <laughs> uh, it's a canon as well. So I need your help again. So we have to divide in two parts. Left part, um, two words for you. Uh, also the the, the rhythm is uh, drei viertel takt, which is huntata 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 and. In words, it's apotek bibliotek. Apotek bibliotek. Apotek bibliotek. Okay. Uh, your words are uh, o mama prostata. O mama prostata. Okay. Yeah. We start together, and I will uh, do my um, poem uh, from A to Z two times. Also twenty six. Letters, words, two times, and don't get confused. <laughs> and hold the rhythm. Uh, and do you want to do it? Yes. No. 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 Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Apotek bibliotek. Zwei, drei. Apotek bibliotek. 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 Yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I would be very 
When Martin said, how do you choose these rhythms that you work with? They choose you, or do you have specific events for um, some of them? Uh, how does it start? I mean, because this is something that happens with poetry, basically. Yeah. In all its history, mm. like rhythms going from language to language, and mm. each language tries to adapt mm. that rhythm. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know how it starts. It always starts with an idea and a sentence, and uh, then to be interested in uh, dif uh, different rhythms and to know about them and to play with it. Um, that's that's how I. Stop, but I can't analyze my writing. Yeah. No, I, I don't want to. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, so you, are, you would not be addressing an audience already? Oh, uh, no, I don't have problems with that, but I, uh, I really don't know uh, so much about me. <laughs> <laughs> Clever, more clever than, than yeah. Than the explanation was, can ever be. No. Uh, uh, while writing, you are more clever than you are. <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I'm asking that because I was thinking about, you know, is this uh, movie from uh, I searched the year because I couldn't remember 1997. Slam. Mm -hmm. One famous with Saul Williams. Ah, so Williams. I, I, I had the opportunity to perform with him one time. Yeah. And there you have this motif of using the rhythm and the words in order to defend yourself. Tell a story in order to diffuse tension. Right. Uh, how are how, how are you working with your rhythms and words in this, from this point of view? Because you already said that you did them as a shy person. Mm -hmm. But I have to mention as well that I played drums before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important. <laughs> yeah, that helps. <coughs> and um, well, the rhythm itself is also um, uh, a construction helping, a helping construction like these formal um, structures I, I used. And so uh, I always felt comfortable um, or in a rhythm, because this thing is uh, of the, from the face, uh, starting with uh, yeah, playing, experimenting, and, and this, uh, formalistic things. Um, and uh, well, that was always uh, easy for me. Uh, and I forgot now. Yeah. <laughs> if if uh, I was uh, referring to the movie that uh, they yeah. used the rhythm yeah. as a way of defending yourself. Mm -hmm. Defending. Yeah. Uh, it's, I won't say def uh, defending, hiding. but again hiding. Hiding. Yeah. Hiding. Yeah. hiding also. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. it's it's mm -hmm. a curtain yeah. or uh, some sort of. Um, but then, then again, you already answered, as you said, that you played, at first you have played drums, mm -hmm. as the rhythm was the art form mm -hmm. in the beginning for you, and That's then came words. poetry and mm -hmm. writing. Okay, so, uh, as my last question is, what do you usually bring back with you from your trips like this tour at home? Well, uh, normally uh, I always had to write postcards for my mother because she collects it uh, and she puts it on the fridge oh. and at no. the end of the year everything away. So uh, you have to uh, travel at the beginning of the year so you have the chance to be longer on the fridge. <laughs> uh, but it, it's um, difficult now to send postcards. And you can't find, well, you find places here in the, the old town, but then they don't have stamps, and then you don't find a, a post office. Yeah. And uh, at the end, you have to send it from Austria. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'd like to print books, um, but the problem always is uh, um, I, I start to do with a lot of my own books, so I can give you uh, one uh, afterwards. And I'd like to have uh, the same amount of books uh, from other countries. But this time I just uh, had one book from Lena, okay. <laughs> a small one, uh, because, well, uh, uh, I couldn't uh, read. I, yeah. And uh, no souvenirs, no? No souvenirs. And then you uh, work with uh, poetry. Anything you bring from these trips, from the working with other poets outside? Uh, yeah, hopefully that's. Um, I'd like to get in contact with the people and um, and from time to time the possibilities um, to invite people as well. Um, and um, that's the colleague I met, wrote the poems together. He doesn't know that I'm here. Uh, you can also. No, yeah, that's fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can make it as a performance. <laughs> Um, yeah, this time I had uh, the opportunity to hear a lot of different voices and, um, uh, well... Uh, but in what way changed you that trips you've had to poetry outside of uh, Austria? Yeah, it changes, uh, changes, uh, it's, it's too far, uh, it's too strong, but it influences and, um, and you don't uh, notice because uh, you get all the... Um, the input from all the uh, languages and um, even <clears throat> I, I like the, the tour modes. I like to to travel th um, uh, for hours in the train uh, and uh, make observations and and um, that always influences the, the writing. At the end. And uh, you, I cannot point it and say, okay, this line uh, mm. is because I stayed there, um, but. Um, I always have my notice uh, book with me, and when it's when it's full, I I take some ideas out of it and um, uh, going by train or bus uh, in Austria is uh, everyday um, duty, and if you do it uh, somewhere else, you have ideas and you you yeah. So being in a country where they don't speak German. Uh, and you don't hear so much German around you. Helps you or uh, yet it helps. makes it harder for you to work with your poetry? Mm. Mm. I, I, I cannot decide. It's both. Um, sometimes you hear in your language, you hear phrases and you have to put them down. Okay. And, uh, that's, that's good as well. Um, and sometimes uh, you're happy to not understand. Yeah, because you just yeah. hear rhythms. Mm. Yeah. Or you just hear the the guy behind you playing ego shooter three three hours and <laughs> <laughs> and you're happy <laughs> that you're still alive. <laughs> no, it's it's um, traveling is um, I'm a, I'm a traveling poet more or less because it's in um, yeah it's in Austria it's also I'm a, Different stages from Vienna to uh, to Innsbruck are just four hours, but I like the, those hours. Um, the train is my moving uh, office, more or less, because at home I just have the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is my last uh, question. It's your third last question. <laughs> 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 